Hello and good evening students and welcome to today's daily quiz presented to you by Baiju's exam prep IS. Let us take a look at the questions we have lined up for today. The first question is how many of the following statements are true? Mahatma Jyotiba Phule established the first girls school in India. Deen Bandhu, a weekly Marathi newspaper was founded by him. He found the Satis Shodhak Samaj in 1873 to focus on the rights of women and backward castes. We have taken this question because yesterday on 11th April, we have celebrated the birth anniversary of Mahatma Jyotiba Phule. Now, he is one of the most pioneer social reformers of India. He was born in the year 1827 in the Satara district of Maharashtra. He along with his wife Savitri Bai Phule were responsible for the establishment of the first girls school in India in the year 1851 after which he was also instrumental in establishing two additional schools for girls as well as an indigenous school for people from the lower castes. Apart from that, he also established in the year 1873 Satya Shodhak Samaj which focused on the upliftment of the most vulnerable sections of the society that is the women and the backward castes. He used the newspaper Deen Bandhu which was a weekly newspaper published from Pune in Maharashtra to spread his ideas from the Satya Shodhak Samaj. However, he was not the founder of this newspaper. This newspaper was found by Krishna Rao Pandurang Bhalekar in the year 1877. So out of these statements, this is correct. This is also correct. The year is correct and the founder is also correct. However, this is wrong. He did use this newspaper a lot, but he was not the founder of it. Now, UPSC does ask such questions. They'll just give you the name of the newspaper and ask you to match it with the right person. Or they can give you a match the following question on such information. So please take this in note. So, our correct answer over here will be B. The next question is regarding the National Credit Framework. What do you understand by the National Credit Framework? It is a framework established by NABARD, National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development, to provide credit to the micro food processing industries. It is a model system by the International Monetary Fund to assist member states regarding the means to manage their national debt. It is a framework by UGC, University Grants Commission, to instruct schools and colleges regarding credit systems. It is a framework that the domestic systematically important banks need to follow to reduce their risk quotient. We have taken this question because the University Grants Commission has released the final report on the National Credit Framework. Now, what are the credits? Credits are essentially a recognition that the learner has completed a prior course of learning corresponding to a qualification at a given level. All of you, during your college years, you must have covered certain minimum number of credits that must be covered in order for you to get a degree. Now, every subject you used to cover in your college they have certain credits associated with them. They can range from anything, be it 1 to even 4, 5 and so on. Now, these credits, they depend on the number of hours that were spent on the study of that particular subject, the type of assignments that were given during that subject and so on. So, that defines the number of credits you earn for a subject and these accumulate to give you a final number of credits, be it 60, 48 and so on, which you need to cover in order to be qualified to get a particular degree. Now, the NCRF, it is a set of guidelines that will need to be followed by the schools, colleges and universities to adopt their specific credit systems. For the first time, the entire school education system will now be brought under the credit system. Up until now, only the National Institute of Open Schooling was following this credit system. The NCRF, it will also cover the skill and the vocational education. However, apart from that, this document on the NCRF also covers or lists down 18 major vidyas or 64 kalas. 
अप्लाइड साइंसेज और वोकेशनल डिसिप्लिन दैट कैन काउंट टूवर्ड्स क्रेडिट अर्न ड्यूरिंग द स्कूल एजुकेशन दिस डॉक्यूमेंट हैज इंक्लूडेड स्पेशल एक्सपर्टीज इन इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम एज वन ऑफ द सिक्स एरियाज इन विच स्टूडेंट्स हु आर नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल लेवल अचीवर्स कैन अर्न द क्रेडिट Apart from Indian knowledge system the other five areas include games and sports performing arts craftsman of heritage social work and special achievement in innovation now under these 18 vidyas four vedas subsidiary vedas including ayurveda dhanurveda puranas nyay mimamsa dharma shastras vedangas they are also included so students who have the special achievements in these 18 vidyas including vedas puranas they can also claim credits under this national credit framework so out of these statements which one is the correct answer it is c that it is a framework for ugc usually we associate credits with banking system with money system that is why the other three options they might be a little confusing however it is related to the credit systems adopted in the education sector the next question is about the juice mission identify the correct statements regarding the juice mission it is a nasa mission that will be launched in april 2023 it aims to explore three of jupiter's moons to find if they have the right conditions for life now the juice mission also known as jupiter ic moons explorer it is a mission of esa that is european space agency it is scheduled to be launched on 13th april now hopefully the conditions will be right and this will be a successful launch however if it is not kindly keep following this mission so that you know when will it be launched now what is the purpose of this mission the purpose is to find whether any of the jupiter's three moons that is europa ganymede and callisto have any conditions that might support the presence of life on these moons Now Europa and Callisto we know that they have liquid oceans beneath the icy shell however we are not sure whether Ganymede has that however it is considered that yes this is also having those conditions and that is why these three moons were chosen for this mission so here one easy way to remember which space agency is releasing this particular mission is that because it is going to europa moon as well european space agency is going to launch it so out of these statements this one is wrong it is esa and not nasa this however is correct yes it aims to explore three of jupiter's moon to find if they have right conditions for life so your correct answer is b The next question is about Taiwan and the water bodies surrounding it. Which of the following water bodies surround Taiwan? South China Sea, Sea of Okhotsk, East China Sea and Philippine Sea. Now we have taken this question because China in the past few days has been conducting a lot of drills off the coast of Taiwan across a Taiwan controlled island that is Matsu Island. Now Taiwan which is located to the east of China is surrounded mainly by four water bodies. We have the South China Sea to the south of it, East China Sea to the north of it, on the west of it is Taiwan Strait that divides it from China and on the eastern side it has the Philippine Sea. The Sea of Okhotsk it is a marginal sea body of western pacific ocean located between the Kamchatka peninsula of Russia on the east the Kuril island on the southeast Japan's Hokkaido island on the south and Shakalin along the western side so it is not anywhere near Taiwan so out of these this is correct this is correct this is also correct so our correct answer is C Now we come to a PYQ from the year 2019. In which of the following relief sculpture inscriptions is Ranyo Ashok, King Ashoka, mentioned along with the stone portrait of Ashoka? Kanganhalli, Sachi, Shahabazgarhi, Sohgora. 
Now because this is a factual question, I'll give you the correct answer. It is Kangan Halli. It is located in the state of Karnataka and in this sculptural depiction, the emperor with his queen and attendants are carved on a slab with the term Ranyo Ashoka, that means Raja Ashoka, mentioned along with the stone portrait of Ashoka. It is the first ever sculpture of Ashoka with his name inscribed in it. Sachi, which has a lot of stupas, Buddhist monuments, located in the state of Madhya Pradesh, it was built by Emperor Ashoka, but it does not have this inscription. Shah Bazgarhi, it is a location in Pakistan, which is also known for its rock edicts of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka. So Gora, it is not a rock edict, it is actually a copper plate instruction written in Prakrit in Brahmi script which is located in the Gorakhpur district of UP. Now we come to the fact of the day which is about the Central Bureau of Narcotics and its unified portal. Now please note the Central Bureau of Narcotics it is a different body compared to the Narcotics Control Bureau which comes under the Ministry of Home. The Central Bureau of Narcotics, on the other hand, it is a central government organization which is affiliated to the Department of Revenue of India and regulated by the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. It deals with the international trade of narcotic drugs, psychotropic substances and precursor chemicals under the ambit of various United Nations conventions and the provision of the Narcotics Drug and Psychotropic Substances Act of 1985. Now these substances, they bear a dual potential as strong medicinal, scientific and industrial use as well as they can be used for illicit activities and substance abuse. Thereby, it is a need to strike a fine balance between the availability of these substances for these positive uses and controlling their proliferation for substance abuse so that compliance with the law can be maintained. Now, Digital Unified Portal that has been launched by the Central Bureau of Narcotics will help in doing business of NDPS and control substances in the country with better transparency and compliance. The portal will have a database integration and ingestion with many other government services like the Bharat Kosh, like GST, like PAN, NSDL validation, eSanchit and UIDAI to facilitate a single point service to obtain the licenses from the Central Bureau of Narcotics. So this will be a one-step solution for all the licensing process of the Bureau so as to ensure that these items, these drugs, they are available for these positive users like medicinal and scientific uses and they do not go the wrong way for substance abuse purposes. Now some factual data about the Central Bureau of Narcotics. It was established in the year 1950 and it is headquartered in Gwalior, in Madhya Pradesh. It is headed by the Narcotics Commissioner of India who is assisted by three Deputy Narcotics Commissioners. In the comments, can you tell us about NCB, the Narcotics Control Bureau, when was it established and who is heading it? So that is all about today's daily quiz. I hope you were able to understand all the concepts. Do not forget to tell us how many questions were you able to answer correctly. And also do not forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such updates. Thank you very much and have a very good day ahead.